subscribe and welcome to Give Cheese a Chance, where I encourage you to make cheese at home. I'm Marianne. Who doesn't like a good Greek salad? I certainly do. It's so scrumptious. Feta is a firm, crumbly, white brined cheese, which is traditionally made using sheep's milk or goat's milk or a combination of the two. The flavor of feta is tangy and salty, and it ranges from mild to more sharp if you let it age longer. Feta is a PDO protected cheese, so I'm going to be showing you a recipe for a feta style cheese today. This recipe takes three days to make and the bulk of the steps happen on the first day with some minor steps happening on the second and third day. The best flavor of this cheese comes after a few weeks or even a few months of aging. So I'm gonna show you now how to make this cheese and you'll see how easy it is. Let's get busy in the kitchen. Before you start any cheese making project, make sure all of your utensils are very well cleaned. So we're going to be using eight liters or two gallons of goat's milk for this feta cheese recipe. Now this is uh, homogenized and pasteurized. It's 3.25% milk fat and I bought it from my local grocery store. One note about milk, you cannot use ultra pasteurized milk for any cheese making project. It just won't work. It's been heated to such a high temperature that the uh, proteins and enzymes have been denatured uh, so that it can be stored at room temperature. So don't use ultra pasteurized milk for this or any cheese making project. Now we're going to heat this milk gently and slowly on a very low temperature until it reaches 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to put in my thermometer, and turn it on and gently turn on the stove. And it should take about 10 to 15 minutes to reach that target temperature. And as the milk is heating up, make sure you stir it occasionally so that the warmer milk at the bottom is mixed with the cooler milk at the top. While waiting for your milk to heat up, measure out a half teaspoon calcium chloride liquid into a quarter cup of non-chlorinated water and stir. So we've hit our target temperature and it's time to turn off the heat. And we're going to add our calcium chloride solution and mix it in. And now we're going to add half a teaspoon of Danisco Choose It Feta Bacterial Culture. This is freeze dried. I keep it in my uh, freezer. It lasts for years. We're going to take that half teaspoon of culture and sprinkle it on the surface of the milk. And we're going to let it sit there for three to five minutes before mixing it in. Here's a list of the bacteria that is found in the Danisco Choose It Feta culture. But don't worry, if you don't have this product, you can use any other mesophilic culture, for example, Aroma B, MA4001, or MA11, and you'll get a good result. So after the time is up, make sure to mix the milk thoroughly so that the bacteria that you sprinkled on the surface gets fully incorporated throughout the milk. And when that's done, cover the pot and let it incubate for one hour. Meantime, add a half tablet of rennet to a quarter cup of non-chlorinated water and let it dissolve. So the one hour is now up and the bacteria has done a good job of acidifying our milk. It's time to add our rennet solution that we prepared earlier. Here it is. I'm gonna give it an extra stir. I'm going to pour it into our milk and then stir for a whole minute. And when I'm done stirring, I'm gonna put the lid back on and let it sit there for another hour. And I also want you to notice that the temperature of my milk has gone down only one degree in the last hour. So as long as it stays between 86 
and 90 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm totally okay. I don't need to reheat anything. It's, it's good to go. Meanwhile, bring a pot half full of water to a boil. Put inside a piece of fabric that you have reserved for your cheese making projects. I'm using butter muslin fabric today. However, you can use an old pillowcase that you don't use anymore for bedding and that you don't wash with your regular clothes. You have to make sure to keep this fabric immaculately clean if you're going to use it for your cheese making projects. So boil it for 15 minutes to sterilize it and then let it cool. So the one hour time is now up. We're going to look inside the pot. We want there to be a gelled curd mass here. And the way that we tell is we insert our knife and we open up that cut that we've made. Has it separated cleanly? Yes, it has. That is a good clean break. So that means it's time for us to cut the curd. We're going to put a long knife in through the curd and make parallel cuts about one centimeter or half an inch apart all throughout the milk in the same direction. And now we're going to cut the curd at a 90 degree angle. We're trying to make cubes basically. So we're doing squares now. And in a tall pot like this, it's very hard to make horizontal cuts. So just do your best. You don't have to be perfect and run the knife horizontally as much as you can going right down to the bottom of the pot. The goal is to have cubes that are uniform in size, but it's virtually impossible as a home cheese maker, unless you have specialized equipment. So we're going to go right down to the bottom and even the other side over here. Let's remove our thermometer. And now that we've cut the curd, we're going to use a rubber spatula just to separate the curds from the outside wall of the pot. And the curds are ve very delicate at this stage. So go slow and be gentle. I'm even going to go right down to the bottom of the pot and bringing up the curds from the bottom of the pot to the top. You'll see that there are some large pieces. Typically they're at the bottom of the pot. And if you come across those, just use your spatula to cut them in half if they're much bigger than the other curds. So for the next 45 minutes, we're going to stir these curds gently every five minutes. And I have a very low tech system over here where I write down all the five minute intervals. And when uh, my timer goes off every five minutes, I just cross off um, my little circles. So I'm sure you have a much more brilliant way of keeping track, but that's my method. So I've just stirred it now and I'm going to set my timer for five minutes and I'm going to come back and stir again. And the five minutes are up. The first of many five minute segments and I'm going to stir gently. It looks pretty good. We basically want to get the curd to become the texture of cooked egg whites. That happens after stirring for about 30 minutes. can definitely feel the curds are much more firm now than when we started. So this is the 40 minute mark and we're going to stir it one more time. There's definitely a lot more whey in the pot than there was when we started. After that stir, we're now just going to let the curds settle for about five or 10 minutes and then we're going to take it to the sink. Okay, we're now at the sink. I have put a strainer in the sink here and I've lined it with my sterilized fabric on the top and underneath it, I'm going to put a bowl to catch the whey. So I'm going to tuck that underneath because I want to keep that whey. It's going to be useful for me. There we go. And we're going to carefully pour all of our curds and whey through the strainer. Mm. 
Now we're going to let that drain for 10 minutes. So the curds have been draining for about 10 minutes. I'm going to get the bowl of whey underneath right now. Now I want to have two liters or half a gallon of whey. And to this whey, I'm going to be adding one half cup of kosher salt. There we go. And we're going to mix it while the whey is still warm. And we're going to put this salted whey aside until we need it later. Now back to these curds, we're going to be adding one third of a cup of kosher salt to these curds right in the strainer. And we're gonna mix it in the strainer. You can really hear a lot of the whey dripping down. And when it's fully mixed, you're just gonna let that drip another 10 minutes. Now it's time you need to set up your cheese press. And if you don't have a cheese press at home, don't worry, you can still do this uh, feta cheese recipe. I suggest you go to my video on Nabulsi cheese and fast forward to the nine minute and 30 second mark where I can show you how to use two heavy cutting boards to make a cheese press without any of these poles or anything like that. So uh, it's now time to take your curds and put them into a mold. So I happen to have a rectangular mold here and I'm just going to pick up the curds. And they're still dripping quite a bit. Maybe I'll put the mold right in here to make it easier. So I'm going to lower the curds and the fabric right into the mold. I'm going to open it up a little bit. Make sure everything's Nice and square, it's fit in quite nicely. And I'm gonna fold over one side. There we go. Nice and flat. And I have another mold, which is exactly the same as this, and I'm gonna use it as what's called a follower. So I'm gonna pick up the whole thing and put it into my cheese press. I'm gonna move it over to the sink so that it drips going to drip right into the sink this way. I'm going to use a kettle that is partially filled with water. There we go. Now it's half filled and I'm going to put it on top as the weight. So we're going to let that drip for an hour and then we're going to come back. So the next step is to take the cheese out of the press. It's going to be very delicate, but we're going to turn it over very carefully and put it back in the press. There we are. So that's a nice block of cheese. There we go. And we definitely want to put more weight on it this time. So that's a full kettle of water or a full pot of water. And that's meant to really get some of the whey to come out and press down quite a bit. So we're gonna let that press another hour. And now that the hour is up, we're going to remove the cheese from the press again. And we're even going to remove it from its fabric. We're gonna take it out and we're gonna put it back in the press without the fabric. We're just gonna put it gently back in. So now that the cheese is in the mold without the fabric, I'm going to put the follower on top and put it in the press. And I'm gonna put the whole weight on top of it. And we're gonna let that sit overnight. It's now 9 a.m. the next morning, and it's time to unmold our cheese. And now I'm going to cut the feta. You can cut them into squares if you like, but I'm going to cut them into rectangles today, about a half inch or one centimeter in thickness. I 
I've measured out one half a cup of kosher salt and we're going to add it to all the surfaces of the feta and then we're going to put it onto a roasting rack. This will allow all of the moisture to drip down into the tray overnight. This step of salting each piece removes even more moisture, making the pieces more firm so that it gives it that distinctive crumbly feta texture. We're going to let these cheeses sit at room temperature for 24 hours. We're gonna make sure that every few hours, just come by and give them a flip. If you have any salt left over, you can coat the other side as well. You can also cover these cheeses with a tray or a very clean tea towel to make sure they don't get any dust on the surface. Well, it's now the next morning, it's day three, and we're going to test the pH of the brine that we made two days ago. It's important to have a pH of 4.6 to prevent spoilage of our cheese. We don't want it to turn mushy in the brine. So a pH measurement is an indicator of acidity and we want the acidity to be about 4.6. So let's take a test using our pH strips here of the pH of our brine. We're gonna take a spoon, take a little bit of the whey with the salt and add it to the pH strip. And the pH strips will change color depending on the level of acidity. And it looks to me to be about 4.9. So what we have to do is add a little bit of acid to our brine until we reach about 4.6, about 4.6. So we have some white vinegar here and I'm going to add a few spoonfuls to our brine and then we're gonna take a measurement of the pH again. One, two teaspoons. We're going to get a new pH strip now. see if that has changed the pH level. Oh, it's definitely brought it down. It seems to be about 4.7. And I added two teaspoons. So I'm just gonna add one more teaspoon of vinegar. And you might have to add three teaspoons. You might have to add none. You might have to add 10 teaspoons. You just have to keep measuring until you get that right pH. This is where your high school science classes come in handy. Take a little bit more brine. So now let's check again. I think that is 4.6 on the nose. That looks good. So our brine is ready to go. So now it's the last step. We just have to store our feta. You can use a Tupperware container or a Rubbermaid container, any kind of plastic storage container, but I like to store my feta in glass mason jars. And that's what I'm going to do today. Just pick up your cheeses and put them into a lovely mason jar like that. So you can use a measuring cup and just scoop that brine and put it on top of your cheese. Now, this brine is used to prevent any bacterial contamination to the surface of the cheese as it is stored and aged. So you wanna make sure that those cheeses are fully submerged. So there we've got a nice jar full of five pieces of feta. I'm gonna cover it with the brine. And that's perfect. We've made two jars of feta. And I'm going to store them for one week at room temperature. And after that, I'm going to store them in a cooler environment at about eight to 10 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature of my basement cold room. And they're gonna stay there for about two to four weeks to mature. And then I'm going to put them in my regular refrigerator where they will get even better and better tasting over the six to 12 month period that they're going to age. And I can eat them at any time after the one week mark, but you'll find they'll get even better and better tasting the more weeks that pass. 
Well, we're done making our feta and I've made two jars with this recipe. This is about 2.4 pounds or one kilogram worth of feta. It's certainly enough to have you eating Greek salad for the next few weeks and enough also for you to share with your friends. Here's my friend Ruth eating some of the feta that I made a few weeks ago. And it's just so much fun to share your cheeses with your friends. They really appreciate it and it feels good to give to everyone as well. Now, another way that you can uh, gift this feta is to put the cheese in jars with some extra virgin olive oil and some herbs like rosemary, peppercorns, or if you wanna give it some kick, some dried chilies, and that makes a great gift to your friends. This cheese also can be eaten right out of the brine. You don't need to desalt it the way you would a nabulsi cheese. So it's very convenient to have a jar of this in your fridge all of the time. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make feta cheese. My name's Marianne. Please make sure you click the like button below and the subscribe button with the bell beside it so you can see my videos in the future. Thanks so much for watching. Give cheese a chance. We'll see you next time. And until then, check out this feta made by my sister-in-law, Lourdes.